a very, very, very polarizing and intriguing player in Eric James. Um, <laughs> the question mark, that's his nickname. Let's make a t-shirt. Eric okay. Thames, the question mark. <laughs> He's go. the Riddler. The question mark. I like it. I love it, actually, because uh, some of you may know we, we've been coining some nicknames for some of these players we've talked about. I like the question mark. Uh, he's the 45th outfielder being drafted right now, 197th overall. That's a 16th round mm -hmm. grade. He's already being projected to be the first baseman for Milwaukee. So he will give you that eligibility. Should, depending on your league, keep outfield eligibility because that's where he's currently listed. So you might have some dual citizenship there and some flexibility. But, uh, I mean, let's, you know, let's get into what this guy is. He, he's flash power in the past when he was in the majors. But he couldn't secure mm -hmm. enough regular at bats and he took his act overseas. His KBO, for those of you unfamiliar with that, Korean baseball organization, his KBO line from last year was absurd. 371 average, 40 homers, 118 RBI, 117 runs scored, and 13 stolen bases on top of it. Just to put it out into perspective, he hit 381 with 47 homers and 140 RBI the year before. He had 37 home runs the year before that. Well, guess what? You know who else was hitting home runs in the KBO and an even, at an even higher rate? Yes, if you answered with Young Ho Park, you would be correct. And we have now seen how that trans <laughs> transitioned and played out against Major League Pitching. So you say, Eric Thames is American. He doesn't have to transition to this culture. He knows the language already. The only problem is he's still not fluent in major league pitching. Okay. <laughs> Everyone hits 20 home runs right now. So the power is intriguing because yes, maybe he could be a 30, 40 home run guy, but the average figures to be similar to what it was before he left. So, you know, I, I'm not really buying the fact that he's just going to come over as a 30 year old and he's figured everything out and he's going to make mm. the transition seamlessly. He's going to speak, you know, we say, you know, broken English. Uh, in New York or Spanglish, for instance, that's what he's going to be in the major league. He's going to speak a broken language. Uh, he's a project worth keeping an eye on, but if you're asking for an awful lot to change in recent transitions to compare his two, I think you're asking for way too much. So you're saying that Eric Thames speaks uh, Karanglish in baseball talk? Karanglish? Yes. Um, yes. But yeah. I call, I'll call this guy the question mark because I have no idea what to think with Thames. There are some things, some things you read, uh, particularly projections, which I'm going to get into because I'm not smart enough to project out what his numbers are. I don't have a, convert, a conversion calculator for KBO to MLB numbers. We saw, you know, uh, 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 Gong with Pittsburgh come in and, and obviously hit relatively well. He's been a solid player off the field stuff to sort of, you know, hamper him a little bit. Park was an absolute disaster. Um, and it's not unheard of for an American to go overseas, figure some things out, come back and have big numbers. That's what happened with Cecil Fielder many, many years ago, went to Japan after playing with the Blue Jays, which is similar to Thames, came back and uh, really, you know, became the home run king in Major League Baseball with the Tigers before he got too fat uh, to play Major League Baseball. But Enough with the history lesson. Uh, in terms of Thames, you know, he's got elite bat speed. You can see it when you watch him. He had it when he was here the first time. I think that bodes well that he did know how to hit the long ball. It was just a matter and a question of playing time. I think he's going to get that with Milwaukee. He'd really have to struggle to end up being replaced. They, let's keep in mind, uh, they cut, more or less, the home run king of baseball last season in Chris Carter and then signed this guy. And Carter was under a team-friendly contract at that. So there's a lot of faith within the Brewers organization in Thames. There's a lot of faith within the projection community with, with Thames. The numbers are absolutely absurd. So let's just go through three different um, projection systems. Depth charts, which is, I believe, a composite ranking of streamer and zips. Uh, depth chart had him at 259 batting average, 336 on base percentage, 504 slugging with 30 homers and 12 steals. Steamer had him at 272, 350, 515 with 29 homers and 13 steals. And Steamer is typically relatively conservative with their numbers. And then Zips is the low man. And I think this is probably more in line with what I'm expecting if it's for real and it translates. 247 batting average, 321 on base percentage, 
493 slugging with 26 homers and 10 steals. This guy is the risk reward pick of 2017. Um, I think we're going to take a chance on him in a couple of leagues just because I like to diversify and I play in about a thousand freaking leagues. But I have some questions with Baines. Like I said, those projections, you read them, that's really exciting. If that's a guy that you can land where he's going and he can put up those sort of numbers, that's an absolute steal that can help you win a league. Um, so I think, I think where he's going, I think the risk is worth it in case that's there. And at worst, if it's a redraft league, you cut bait and you move on to somebody else. Yeah, I think you, you just, you, you translated that perfectly, I should say, because <laughs> for where he's going, I can totally see him hitting 30 homers and stealing, you know, 10 to 15 stolen bases. That's just what he is. And as we've seen recently with the power surge in Major League Baseball, Everybody, literally, if you play reg, if you get any sort of regular at bats, you could just lock in 20 home mm-hmm. runs. It's like getting 200 for writing your name on the SAT. It's that's what it's become now. So for him to get to 30, though, that is now becoming more than a, the 45th outfielder. Uh, so mm-hmm. yes, I absolutely think you know for where you're getting him, you can certainly meet those numbers. I just think when people start to project. The lofty, you know, over 300 average, the 40 plus homers. Nope. And to get to those numbers, those are just away. ridiculous. Uh, I also noticed, you know, there were a lot of transitions there from Cecil Fielder, Yankee, to Chris Carter, now Yankee, to Eric Timms, the question mark, speaking of another superhero. Kind of looks like Spawn, right? The guy who played Spawn, he looks all jacked up and stuff now. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of transitions. He's huge. 